Hey guys, this is Scotty with The Loft at Home. Uh, today we are doing intro to indoor cycling. Um, I didn't call it spin because it's a little bit different. We are catering this series to cyclists, to getting inside and riding a bike and learning technique to make you a better cyclist outside and to build strength on the bike. Spin class is, hey, I got nothing against spin class. It's super fun, it's energetic. You're doing exercise up top, bebop, all that, fast spin, good workout, but it doesn't really develop a lot of cycling technique. And so indoor spin is definitely more cycling focused. Today we're gonna run through how to, how to spin indoors. I guess the other thing which I endorse heavily is Cycling shoes. So something with a stiff sole. I've got some Giro Empires here. These are pretty uh, retro. And we're clipping into a Shimano SPD R road system or SPD SL. Um, so being able to clip in has two benefits. Number one, it is better for the fit of the bike. You're on the bike and you're clipped in. So you're in the same position every time you get on the bike. The other benefit is the ability to pull on the backstroke and develop more muscles to be more efficient on the bike. You can definitely gain a, another 30 to 40% of efficiency just by clipping in and being able to pull on the backstroke. Also, we do a lot of single leg drills uh, and it's pretty tough to do that with a flat pedal. You can do a regular shoe with a toe clip, but again, you're gonna kinda move around a lot more and I highly recommend getting a set of shoes and clips. They don't have to be fancy road shoes like this. You can get spin bike shoes. I like to wear kit. Um, you know, bib short, good quality bib short and uh, cycling jersey, but at least get yourself like an athletic top. Let's not wear cotton. Um, it'll just soak through right away. This breathes a lot better and it'll keep you cooler. And then a cycling short with a little bit of padding in the butt is gonna be great because a lot of this is pretty static. You're sitting down hard. Um, an hour on a spin bike is kind of like two hours outside because you're not moving around as much. So a good cycling short is a good idea. That's it for gear. I mean, you know, people add heart rate monitors, there's a computer on this bike to know how fast I'm going. The fit of the bike. So if you're riding your own bike, hopefully you've got it fit already um, and it's a little bit easier and that's one of the reasons people are choosing the smart trainers or the rollers because you're getting on the bike that you're familiar with and you're comfortable with. Um, on a spin bike, let's say we show up to a spin class and we're like, oh, I don't know. I'm basically gonna measure from the top of the saddle near the clamp here. So just about there, down to the center of the bottom bracket here. The other thing we do on these spin bikes is the saddle fore and aft. When we're doing a bike fit, we'll do a straight line up here and then you measure your offset um, from that straight line. I would say kind of set it in the middle to start with and see how that feels. If you're riding on the front of the saddle all the time, that's gonna be really uncomfortable. Scooch the saddle further forward and you'll be sitting further on the sit bones. You wanna be your pressure on the sit bones in the back of the saddle. The other adjustments we have are saddle height or another term for that is drop. Kind of distance from a level line from our saddle to our handlebar is our drop. A good rule of thumb is just to start level. I know my height is definitely, you know, kind of like a fist worth of drop from the saddle. And then the final is your handlebar fore and aft. And maybe a good rule of thumb there is kind of a handshake position. So when I go to a handshake, I'm not going like that and I'm not going like this. I'm kind of in the middle there. So a slight bend in the elbows. So when I'm on the bike there, that's a pretty good level for me. You know, I'm not too stretched out and I'm not pinching back at all. I'm kind of in a normal position there. And that's about it for fit. All right guys, welcome to the Loft at Home. We are doing a 30 minute intro spin today. Uh, I'll go through some of the basics of what I like to teach when I'm coaching spin, um, some of the techniques that you can practice at home um, if you wanna put something together yourself. So right now we're in a uh, just a five minute warm up. Um, and honestly, this is just kind of getting comfortable with the bike. If you need to make any adjustments on your bike, um, 
or if you forgot to grab some water or any of that stuff, this is the time to do it. Hopefully you've done it already and you can uh, just loosen up the body a little bit with this uh, five minute segment. Um, after that, we are gonna get into what I like to call the warm up, the real warm up, where you're doing some work, you're learning a little bit of technique and you're actually getting your heart rate up and starting to sweat a little bit. Um, it's good to do a really good warm up, like I'd say 15 minutes or so before you're getting into anything with a, a high level of effort. Um, after our warm up, we're gonna get into a, a little bit more effort, uh, but I'm trying to keep this you know, friendly. It's uh, maybe early season for us in the first video we've been watching or doing. So uh, we're gonna do a couple of cadence pyramids, which is a pretty simple thing that a lot of cycling coaches will do um, to help develop technique uh, in terms of being able to spin quickly, but also develop some good practice and, and leg strength. Um, so once we've finished this five minute spin, I'm gonna go through a series of sort of 20 second efforts uh, with 40 seconds of rest afterwards. The first four are going to be single leg drills. So you need to be clipped in for this um, with our left foot or right foot, doesn't really matter, we will unclip and then we will spin with a single leg. We're only gonna do this for 20 seconds to start with. Um, this is a really key drill to help learn proper spin and proper rotation. A lot of us are really good at mashing down on the front of the pedals, um, the front of the pedal stroke, but what we ultimately wanna be able to do is a full pedal stroke and a full circle. When I'm coaching a lot of my classes, I really, I say full circles, full, full circles, whether we're doing single leg drills or heavy gear work. Um, I, I probably say it about 50 times a class um, because I really want to help teach you how to spin properly uh, and more efficiently so that you're using lots of different muscles instead of just our quads to push down so you can get up the hills faster you can get out there and ride faster and more efficient. The next thing we're gonna do will be standing for 20 seconds and then sitting for 40 as a rest. So standing, we're gonna come forward on the bike. We're not just standing and you know, hurting our arms like this. Coming forward on the bike, um, we'll probably need to add a little bit of tension, whether it's uh, you know, shifting down a gear if you're on a normal bike or uh, you've got a spin bike and you can crank up the dial a little bit. Um, this is sort of simulating a hill. Um, there's a few techniques that I'll talk about while we go through that. And then finally, we're gonna do fast spin. So fast spin, basically if we're, I'm currently, I've got a cadence meter on here to tell me how fast I'm spinning. I'm spinning about 75 RPM, which is a little slow for me. Um, we want to build up our ability to spin comfortably at 90, um, but on a spin bike, I mean, I can spin at 120 pretty easily. So fast spin, we're just going to spin it up so that we're still feeling comfortable, but we're not uh, bouncing on the side. If you're spinning too fast or if your fit is wrong, you're going to be bouncing all over the place. All right, so that's kind of the, the warm up rundown. Um, we've actually, I've been chatting for five minutes here almost, so in about 15 seconds, we'll start with those single leg drills. Um, correct me, uh, the way we've got the timer set up, we actually have a 40 second break to start with, and then we're going to the uh, 20 seconds. <laughs> okay, so in 40 seconds, we will be doing our uh, single leg drills. I'm gonna start spinning with my left foot, unclipping my right, because I'm a lefty, I like starting left. You want a little bit of tension. Um, you don't want this in your easiest gear, but you don't want a super heavy gear. As you get better at it, um, 
it's good to, good to add a little bit more tension. All right, so we're gonna unclip with our right and spin with our left. A few things to remember here, keep your core engaged, pulling up on the backstroke with our hip flexor and just spinning efficiently here. If you wanna challenge yourself, spin faster. That makes it harder. All right, good job. Flip back in with your right and spin for 40 seconds. This is also a really good practice for just clipping in and out. Something that we can all use more practice in so we don't fall over a stoplight or something like that outside. Um, the other thing with single legs, what you'll notice when you fatigue and when it gets too hard is, is you'll hit a clunk point where you just can't really pull up and over. And usually that happens when we're doing like one minute drills. Um, 20 seconds is pretty short and you're not gonna fatigue too much, but you'll notice that. And you just wanna fight that clunk and just get that leg over as much as you can. It'll get easier, I promise. All right, that's our cue to get onto our right foot only, unclipping with the left. Again, spinning. It's nice to be able to feel the tension all the way around, and not just pushing on the front. I'm really focusing on pulling up on the back, almost more so than pushing the front. Great, let's clip back in. And we're gonna go through that another two times on each, or one time on each leg, just to get a little more practice. It gets a little harder on the second round because our legs are getting a little more tired. So 20 seconds and then we'll go back to our left leg only. In three, two, one. All right, left leg. Again, full circles. Think of that whole pedal stroke all the way around. Nice and smooth. Notice how my knee is tracking straight up and down. I'm not going all over the place like this. All right. Full legs. Getting warm in here. Now's the time to turn on your fan if you have one or hopefully you already have it on. And 10 seconds till we go to our right leg only. And let's go, right leg. Nice and smooth, full circles, pulling up on the backstroke, pushing on the front, and both legs. Good job. So that's our single leg stuff complete. Next thing we're gonna do is standing. So you notice when I was doing single leg, I kept the tension the same the whole time on my bike. With standing drills, I'm gonna add a bit of tension just before I stand, do the standing drill, and then back that tension off a little bit. If you're on your bike, you're probably gonna wanna like shift a couple gears down in the back and then shift up when you recover. Um, obviously you can make it harder by adding more tension, but this is still a warm up, so let's not go too crazy here. We're trying to learn standing technique. All right, so let's add that tension, shift that gear and stand up. We're only standing for 20 seconds. Your cadence is probably gonna drop a little bit here. That's okay. I go to the drops on my spin bike, but you can stay up top. You just want to focus on staying forward, trying your upper body doesn't need to bob too much, and have a seat, back it off, and spin. Standing drills are great to get your heart rate up. They definitely get the blood flowing really fast. You want to remember when you're doing the standing, that you're still spinning full circles. It's really easy to get into that habit of just pushing down on the front of the pedal stroke. But again, full circles, pulling up on the back, especially when the tension gets higher. You'll be much more efficient and you'll be able to stand for longer. 
All right, let's add a bit more tension. Up again. We're gonna go through this four times, all right? So this is round two of the standing. Again, quiet upper body. I've heard of coaches putting a water bottle between riders' shoulders. See how quiet they can be. And take a seat, back it off. All right, good job, guys. Definitely getting into the thick of this warm up. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty, pretty warm. And that's what we want with a warm up, right? I want to be warm. I want to work a bit on my technique, work out all the kinks before I get into the anything a little bit more serious. All right, five seconds. We're going up again. Let's bump up that tension a little bit. Standing, coming forward on the bike, keeping your upper body quiet, full circles. I'm not just pushing down on the front, I'm pulling up on the back as well. All right, good job. Back it off a bit. With this whole workout, you can definitely increase the level of effort by increasing the interval time. So right now we're doing 20 seconds on, 40 seconds off. You bump it to 30, 30, it makes a big difference, makes it a lot trickier. This could even be a main set for you if you warmed up for 10 minutes beforehand. And three, two, one. A little more tension, up again. Good job guys, full circles. Nice quiet upper body. I've got my core engaged. And we are done standing. All right, 40 seconds here. And then we are going to do fast spin, high cadence. Most of my cadence so far has been about 75, 80 RPM. I'm gonna try to bump it up, maybe 100. I'm pretty comfortable at 100. I can, you know, definitely go higher than that. But again, we're still warming up. And I might increase it each time. We're gonna do four rounds of this as well. So we'll see how I feel. Knowing me, I'll go out of the gate at 120 and blow up. All right, let's go. So, increasing that cadence, that spin. I didn't really add any tension here. I'm trying to keep it light. And we're really, again, we're working on our spin here. Not to get ahead of the gear. All right, so I was about 105 there, maybe a little more. Felt good to me. Back it down to Back down to about 80. So again, this part of the warm up is getting a hurry going. It's working on technique. As is pretty much everything we do on the spin bike here. All right, five seconds and we're gonna go up again. All right, let's pick it up. Maybe try a little faster than last time if you're feeling good. I'm getting closer to 110 now. Still feeling pretty comfortable. And then back it off. I've been cycling and coaching for many, many years. So for me, 110 is pretty, pretty normal. It might be challenging for you. Just uh, ride within your limits here. If, if 90 is a challenge, then bump it up to 90. If you're bouncing on the saddle, you're probably trying a little too hard. Back it off a little bit. Pretty important to have a cadence meter on for this one. Sorry, forgot to mention that. <laughs> All right, five seconds, we'll go up again. 
And here we go. I'll pick it up. I'm going to push it a little bit this time. Again, I'm thinking about my full circles and pulling up on the back, pushing down on the front. I'm doing 120 pretty comfortably now. And easy. Back it off. One more round, and we've made it through this warm up. And really, I extended this warm up and this workout to just show you some of the different drills that we like to do and how you can use them to improve and to warm up. Um, you know, you can use these in the middle of the set, at the beginning. It's good to do single leg stuff at the very end because you're tired and that's when you're really going to work on it. Uh, let's go up again. This is our last time. Hi, Cadence. Challenge yourself, maybe get it up to the point where you're bouncing a little bit. Maybe go crazy on this one. 140. Yeah. All right. And back down. Awesome. Okay. So, our next main is going to be a cadence pyramid. I haven't talked too much about this. We're seated the whole time. We are running pretty low tension and it's a continuous effort. So we're actually already in it. Um, I'm gonna start at 80 RPM and work myself up by 10 each minute. So at a minute, I'm gonna go to 90. In the next minute, I'm going to go 100. And then I'm going to go back down to 90, uh, back down to 80, and then up again and down again. So two rounds through. Um, this main effort can change drastically by how much tension you're using. It should be comfortable at the low points, which we're, we're at right now. Okay, we've been through a minute of it right now, so I'm going to bump it up and get myself up to 90 RPM. We're gonna to start to breathe a little bit here. We didn't really have any set break between our warm up and this, so this is maybe a little, we're pushing it a little bit here. Um, if you're newer to cycling, I would recommend taking a couple minutes after that warm up that we did before we get into this. But that's okay. In the effort of time and showing you everything, we wanna make sure we can pack it all in here. So we're on the upslope of our cadence pyramid. I'm spinning at 90 for a minute. I got another 20 seconds at this rotation. And then I'm gonna bump it up to the top, it's 100. 80, 90, 100 is a relatively beginner, I would say, set. Um, when I'm doing this on my own, okay, we've hit a minute there, we're gonna bump up to 100. Sorry, back to where my train of thought. When I do this on my own, I'll usually have 90 as my low point, and I'll go up as far as 120 and make the pyramids longer. So we're 100 or more, a little bit more than 100 right now, in the middle of our peak, our first peak. Starting to breathe a bit. Again, I'm, I'm focusing on my spin, my full circles. I'm keeping my core engaged. And you know, you're breathing hard here, so make sure you're taking nice deep breaths. Grab some water if you're really feeling it. And that's over the top, so now we're Coming down to 90. Slow it down a little bit. Don't let it drop too much though. It's easy to kind of fall off the cliff. We don't want that. We want a nice smooth pyramid here. So I'm back at 90 or just over 90, just right where I want it. Quite often in a, a long pyramid and in a hard effort, this minute after the top is almost harder than the top minute because you've gone hard for the top and maintaining here without just letting it drop is, is challenging. We got another 30 seconds at this one. And then we'll be 
Back down to 80. Almost there, guys. You're doing great. If you're still with me, thank you. Hopefully you're learning a few things here so you can get on to some of our awesome Loft at Home videos, get some serious workouts going. All right, that's another minute. I'm gonna back it all the way down to 80. This should feel a bit like a break now. I mean, we're still spinning. We're not just cutting it off completely, but yeah, kind of a chill minute here. Catch your breath, maybe uh, grab some water. Keep it spinning at 80, don't just let it fall off. All right, so we're halfway through this pyramid. Uh, well, we completed one pyramid and we are on to our second pyramid now. So we're spinning at 80 here. In about 15 seconds, we'll go back up to 90 and do it over again. All right, let's bump it up. Back up to 90. Start getting our groove on here. If you're thinking, oh man, this workout's too easy or I'm just, I'm just gonna turn this off. Don't turn it off now. Just turn your dial up and try to keep it at 90 and go over the pyramid. You know, get the, get the full workout done. It'd be good for you. If you're on rollers right now, I think cadence pyramids are probably one of the best things you can do on rollers. You've got to really focus a lot and you don't have to stand up too much, which is tricky on rollers unless you're Mitch, and you'll see why later. All right, we're through that minute. Well, let's get it up to the top. 100, if you're feeling good, maybe go a little higher and do 105 just for fun. Stay focused here. Again, full circles, core's engaged. Breathe in, mock yourself up if you're drilling all over your bike. Don't let it drop though. Keep an eye on that cadence. You guys are doing awesome, keep it up. Only a couple more minutes, we're finished this whole workout. All right, so we're still spinning over 100. Another 10 seconds here. Getting through. Awesome, okay. Let's bring it back down to 90. Don't let it fall all the way off. Let's stay focused. Keep spinning, keep pushing a bit. Nice smooth breaths. Full circles on those pedals. You guys are doing great. Hope you're enjoying the loft at home here. We got a ton of good videos coming up this season. This is only the tip of the iceberg. We've got 10 more seconds here at 90. And final minute. Let's back it all the way down to 80. We're in that range. It's almost hard for me to do 80 now. I'm like 85 and it's like, oh, should I slow down even more? And that's the benefit, or another one of the benefits of a cadence pyramid is you're, you're training yourself to spin faster and then slower spinning becomes a lot easier. And 30 more seconds here at 80. And we are good. 
We're gonna do, I think a five minute cool down after that. So that's just gonna be like, back it off all the way, keep the legs spinning, but just let that heart rate come back down. Nice and low before we get off the bike. You don't wanna just jump off the bike after this kind of effort. Awesome, all right, so that's completed. Our cadence pyramid is done. The bulk of the work is done. We just got five minutes, chilling out, thinking about what we're gonna have for breakfast or dinner. Maybe a frosty beverage, not the best recovery, but pretty enjoyable. I'm gonna have some water before I do that. And it's like 9.30 in the morning, so probably a little early for a multi-beverage. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, the Locked at Home intro to indoor cycling. Um, we're just gonna continue this cool down for another four minutes or so. Uh, check out all the videos that we've got coming at you this year. There's some really amazing coaches from all over the Victoria cycling area. Um, pro riders, people that have won some major, major races in, in the world. Um, awesome people, lots of energy. Turn up your tunes at home, listen in, and get addicted to this uh, indoor cycling that we're putting out for you. One thing I, uh, I like to do a little bit of stretching when I'm done a workout. Uh, the one drawback to all this cycling is that we create very tight hip flexors. And, you know, it's, it's fun to get involved in cycling and I've been racing competitively for 10 years or more, um, but it does take its toll on your body. And I found in the past few years that, uh, you know, stretching routine, maybe a little yoga or something is really important to balance things out. Single leg drills are awesome for cycling technique, but they really tighten up these hip flexors. And so when you're done hopping off your bike, try to stretch those out a little bit, spend a little bit of time. Even if it's just five minutes, it'll, it'll help you in the long term. Now help your lower back, which is a common complaint with cyclists, especially newer riders. So we got two minutes left here in our cool down. Hopefully your heart rate's coming down a little bit. You're feeling good, feeling ready to go tackle whatever else you got today. Uh, I encourage you to comment below. Let us know what you liked. Let us know what you don't like. Let us know what you wanna see. We can make it happen. Got about a minute and a half. If you can, you can back off the tension even a little bit more. Slow your cadence down even a little bit more. Just really uh, let those legs spin light and easy for that last minute. Again, drink lots of water. 